Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Truck Guy Joe. On today's video, I just wanted to do a follow-up on the new gooseneck and just give you a little more detail as to how I actually spec'd out the trailer, give you some more specifics. Just in case you were wondering if you have any questions or maybe you're considering buying a trailer for yourself, I just wanted to share with you how I set this one up for the application that I'll be using it for. Okay, let's go into some specifics. As I mentioned in the first video, I really wanted a Maritz trailer because of the two position dovetail. So right now I have it in the up position where it's parallel with the rest of the deck. And as I stressed before, you gain floor space, five feet. So this dovetail portion is five feet and the, the rest of the deck is 22. So with it in the up position, 27 total feet, round bales, pipe, metal, anything that you wanna haul, even a vehicle, a large cabin chassis, it is load bearing. And secondly, Clearance, I stress that as well, going in and out of different areas, parking spots, uh, gas stations, even dealerships, truck, you know, truck companies, everywhere that I go, it's really nice to have this additional clearance from you know, this piece here, the bottom, the lowest piece of the trailer, and the ground itself. And I'll get my tape and do a measurement here and show you the difference of when it's in the up position versus the load position. I don't want to sound too repetitive, but if you're watching this for the first time, first time ever watching the channel or seeing this video, I know there's the option for the hydraulic adjustable dovetail. And my reasons for not going that route were it adds weight. Not too much weight, but it adds enough weight that the more weight you add to the base weight of the trailer, the less payload you have, the less you can actually carry. Number two, it's just more components that can fail, more stuff that can go wrong. So as I mentioned, I don't mind that I have to either, you know, get the jack out, and manually adjust it up and down, or you know, I do have a John Deere tractor. With the John Deere, I could just use the forks. I've got a set of forks that I can just put underneath the deck, and you can raise it up using the forks. I mean, I honestly could go that route. I don't really want to scratch it that much. I'm okay with just cranking it. I'm not gonna have the tractor with me if I'm out on the road moving stuff around. So let me just show you real quick how you actually adjust the dovetail. Pretty simple and pretty slick. This jack is provided by Maritz. It's part of the package that you can order with the adjustable dovetail. It's just like any other jack you would find on a trailer itself. You know, just for a, a tongue jack, if you will. Uh, pretty, pretty simple to use, pretty self-explanatory. I mean, they give you a receiver in the back of the trailer, uh, slide it in, use the pin, and you know, you've got your you know, adjustable foot, no big deal. And then basically, you just put some pressure on it. You're actually gonna raise the bottom of the deck. You're, you're picking up the deck and it takes the weight off the pins. And there's pin on each side. So once you raise it, I know the lighting's kind of bad here, guys. I hope you can see this. But once you raise it, see how I broke, I broke this free. I uh, basically took the, uh, took the weight off. So you just undo the pin. And this guy comes right out. All right. And we're going to go around right to the other side. Same thing. You just put enough tension on that you can pull the pin. So here we go. Take the pin out. And there you go. Now I can lower the dovetail down. Use the jack and move it down so it lines up with the holes in the, in the load position and we'll slide the pins back in. Before I lower the dovetail, I just want to show you the measurement of how much clearance you have between this piece of the frame and the actual ground. So you're just under 20 inches. I mean, it's really close, just under 20 inches. So you're not two feet, but more than a foot and a half clearance, which makes for some nice entry and exit out of different areas when you're traveling. So that's a nice option to have for sure. Glad I have this. Okay, so I just fast forward ahead here. Just use the jack to lower the deck down. Just crank it down, make sure the pins line up. It's real simple. You just lower it down, you take a peek, the pins line up, you can slide them through, you can pin them. And now that we're in the down position, I can show you the, the ground clearance. You know, you definitely lose quite a bit. There's not much difference between, you know, the beam here and the floor. So let's just do a quick measure here. You're about 11 inches. So we went from 20 to 11. So you lose about nine inches of clearance there. And you know, could you safely transport in this position? Sure you can, you know, you'll be okay, but you might have an occasional scenario where you're gonna drag pavement, asphalt, concrete, whatever the case may be. So as I mentioned, I don't mind cranking that back up just so going down the road or where I'm going, don't have to necessarily worry about it. Pretty simple to do, doesn't take much effort and uh, keeps old guys like me in shape. Early on in my investigating process when I wanted to order a trailer, I knew that from past experience, I have a 2006 Maritz already, just an 18 foot plus four that I bought new in 2006. So I knew I liked their trailer, I knew I liked the quality. So when it came time for a gooseneck, 
I knew Maritz was the brand, a brand I wanted to go. And I made the claim in the last video, I wasn't sure if there was another company that offered an adjustable dovetail. And I do remember that Corn Pro does, but there was a reason why I still went with Maritz over the Corn Pro. So yes, Corn Pro does offer the adjustable dovetail with a jack, but I could not find anywhere where Corn Pro offered a low profile deck. And that's a big detail that I missed on my first video of this. I, I was so excited, I just must have breezed over it. But this is the low profile deck, which is an option for Maritz. So that deck height is 33 inches instead of 36. Standard deck would have been 36 inches. So with the 33 inch deck height, lower profile, you get a better approach angle for low, clear, low clearance vehicles, for getting on and off, okay? That's important to me. Secondly, height. I do haul some smaller box trucks. So the lower the deck, the taller box truck I can get going down the road legally and not have to worry about bridge clearance. And then lastly, center of gravity. Lower the deck, better center of gravity, you're gonna have a better ride quality. I also had O'Reilly install a spare wheel and tire, 17 and a half inches to correct one. It'll go right on, tucked away up in the neck real nice. They also made me some custom brackets, put some LED work lights on. Those are connected to a toggle. And they you know, wired everything real nice with looms and tucked everything away. The batteries put inside the toolbox. These are real nice and bright. They do a great job of giving you uh, a good field of vision. So if you're going to load a vehicle at night uh, and you're, you know, just need some extra, extra help with lighting, these things are more than bright. And speaking of rescuing, also had uh, O'Reilly install a worn 12,000 pound winch. This is the Xeon 12S. And I had them go with the synthetic cable. You know, it's got the not a metal cable, but it's a synthetic rope, and it's plenty strong, read a lot of good reviews on it. Uh, hopefully, I don't ever have to use this, but if I do, it's there. If I need it, it always comes in handy. Uh, it's definitely a big, heavy son of a gun, and I also had O'Reilly make it removable, so I can actually take this off just by pulling the pin, uh, mainly for theft. I mean, if I have to leave the trailer outside overnight somewhere from traveling, I can easily disconnect and take the winch off, put it somewhere safe, so when I come out in the morning, or whenever I'm leaving, uh, the worn winch didn't grow legs and walk away. When it comes to the jacks, I did order the trailer with the dual jacks, and that's just nice for stability, as far as when you're taking the trailer on and off, or even if you do want to load something when it's not connected to the truck. I mean, it, it can be done. This does add some stability. Also, I went with the dual, the, the two-speed jacks. So you got two speed, and like right now, like you can see how this piece, you know, you can see the grease and this wear area. It, right now, it's pulled out. So when it's pulled out, that's like low range. So you crank, the cranking is very easy, but it goes slow, but that's great for when there's weight. If you got something on the trailer and you're gonna you know, basically unload the trailer, take it off with, the, with weight on it. It's kind of like first gear on a 10 speed bike. Pedaling like crazy, you're not really going anywhere, but it's easy to pedal. So the other, the other position, if you push it back in, see how it slid back in? So now you don't have that, you can see the space here now. That is like high range where basically you're cranking, but the trailer itself is moving a lot faster. So it's super convenient. Like just now when I took the, tr the trailer off the truck, I was able to raise the, uh, the hitch right up uh, nice and quick and faster. So it's gonna be a little bit of a time saver. Uh, it was something I thought about. I'm like, do I really wanna go that route? And I'm like, yeah, what the heck? If I'm gonna custom order it, might as well add the creature comforts that I think in the long run are gonna help uh, make ownership more enjoyable. As far as axles go, I did upgrade to the optional 8,000 pound axle. And the dead giveaway is the 17 and a half inch steel wheel and tire. I went this route just for you know, durability and longevity. It was an option over the 7,000 pound. I figured if I have the choice, I'm just gonna put the bigger, heavier axles on. Uh, it was just, in my opinion, was the right way to go. Now, as far as toolboxes, uh, there's aluminum toolboxes on each side, one on the passenger, one on the driver's side. They're aluminum, they're six feet, and they do have a pass-through. So they do have dual drop-down doors but it is a you know one big box, so I can put a lot of stuff in here. I did buy some bins so I can organize things like my tie downs and my chains, binders. I do take a lot of stuff with me. Uh, again, I, I do have a CDL, class A combination, so I, I'm allowed to tow you know, gross combination over 26,000. So I do have to take my safety triangles with me. I take flares, uh, fire uh, extinguisher, uh, cones, everything you need for a, a breakdown or any kind of a hazard. So same toolbox on the driver's side. You know, I take the typical stuff with me. Lighting might be a little bit bad here, but I've got you know your your uh, grade 70 chain here, uh, axle straps. I've got wheel bonnets. I do take a jack with me, so the toolboxes will do a nice job of allowing me to keep the driver side stuff here, passenger side stuff there, so I don't have to like necessarily run back and forth. Uh, I can have what I need to tie down the driver side, and then walk over and have what I need for that side, and it should make for 
better organization and less running around, which is gonna save time. If you do follow me on Instagram, I, I have very few followers. I, it's, you know, it's, it's private, I don't have it open to everybody. But if you wanna follow me, my Instagram is at uh, truckijoe, just like the YouTube channel. But my wife, Lynn and I, we did seal the deck. So I did a clear sealant, but we added the, uh, oh, they call it shark bite. It's like an, an, an adhesive grip. So that way, if I ever get out on a, on a wet day, uh, you know, hopping out of a vehicle or whatever the case may be, it just the deck won't be as slippery. So I added some, some sure-footedness by putting some grip down. So the deck is sealed, have some extra bite down. And uh, Lynn, if you're watching, uh, thanks for your help, dear, I love you. She's very supportive, all my crazy ideas and things I wanna do. Uh, lastly, I do have some decals coming. I'm gonna put a few decals on it. And also, I am gonna drop it off and get some areas spray with Linex. I wanna protect some of these areas from stone chips. Uh, again, it's all based on longevity. So I've already been to the Linex dealer and Jim Franz is gonna take care of me and get it in and mask things off. And I'll show you that once it's done. Okay, lastly, let's talk about weight. This trailer is rated at 17,000 GVWR, gross vehicle weight rating, 17,000 pounds, okay? So what that means is that this trailer, when loaded, cannot exceed 17,000. That's what it's built for. And keep in mind the fact that I added toolboxes already and there's a battery inside the toolbox for the winch. I added the winch, the work lights, the spare tire. That all deducts from the payload. So yes, I can be at 17, but I limited my payload already by what that stuff weighs. So I do want to go weigh this trailer. I haven't done it yet, but I do want to weigh it so I know exactly where I come in at. It'd be interesting to know just roughly empty, you know, how much, how much hitch weight I have, you know, you know, tongue weight coming down on the ball. It'll help me, you know, to figure out exactly for loading. That's something that you need to do um, is know your weights so you can load properly. And that way you travel safely. You don't have too much tongue weight, not enough. Uh, I did get it state inspected. So the trailer is Pennsylvania state inspected. That's done. And then also because it is heavy enough, I went with a permanent plate. Pennsylvania on heavier trailers, you are allowed to do a permanent plate. So there it is. One time fee. I don't have to register it every year makes it a little more convenient for basically not having to write that check every year and remember to register the truck. I'm sorry, register the trailer. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you're still here watching, I appreciate your time. Thanks for being here. I knew I do kind of ramble and talk a lot. I just kind of get excited. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions whatsoever about the trailer, about my experience with O'Reilly equipment, anything you need to know, uh, drop a comment, leave a question. Again, if you wanna follow me on Instagram, it's at truckguyjoe. But thanks again for your time. Everyone have a great day and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.